So I was uh, watching a, a movie last night, uh, Thor, Thor Ragnarok. Thor Ragnarok. Uh, sorry about that. And um, anyway, Thor Ragnarok. Um, I saw in the, I actually saw it in the movie theaters in East London, here in the Eastern Cape. Uh, but uh, I got a copy last night. It's a fun movie, so I, I really liked it. But one of the, sometimes these movies have profound, profound statements in them that will get by everything. Let me let me let me start over again a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, by just saying this. Um, when in the sixties, you know, we had the Black Arts Movement, you know, and also there was a hard political times, Black Power Movement, whatever have you. But if you actually uh, took a chance to notice, there's a thing we call a soft power and hard power. Like hard power, we're military power. When somebody takes over your country, you know, with, with military might. Soft power is when, when they convince you uh, culturally, you know, like uh, through your music, uh, through your art, you know, films or whatever have you, that, that this is the way to go, you know. And so, so what happens is, a uh, song, for instance, so what happens is songs, culture is much more powerful than people realize, you know. So putting up a film, for instance, with Thor Ragnarok, um, um, I saw it. Uh, it's a comic book universe kind of thing. So Black Panther is going to be very, very important, incredibly important uh, phenomenon because culturally it's going to go places that other places people just can't go. You know, with your military might, you can't go. So, so it's going to be quite interesting how Black Panther, uh, 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 the culturalness of Black Panther, just like Get Out, the, the phenomenon of last year, uh, Get Out, it was a phenomenon in terms of uh, dealing with race or whatever have you. But these are soft kind of uh, things that, that you get, you, 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 you gently get people to, to do what you want, you see, through their culture, you convince them through a song, you know, whatever it is. Okay, it is, there's a thing that I came across a long time ago, is that, oh, uh, how does a, a how does a leader get followers, or, or what, 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 what constitutes a movement? How does a movement start? And then a movement usually starts not with the leader, but with the first follower. That's what I got from TED Talk. With the first follower, and that, that first, the first person to get a follower, then that follower gets other followers, and that's how your movement spreads, okay? I bring up all of that, <laughs> which doesn't sound related. Uh, just to say this, I've been looking at this thing, uh, especially with the advent of, of Donald Trump and, and stuff like that. And uh, uh, Monagawa is this, is the, ever since Monagawa is the new uh, 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 president uh, until elections happen, uh, I get the end of the year of, uh, of Zimbabwe. Um, so we, had, so I was looking at this thing as, as in, when I was watching Thor Ragnarok, um, uh, the, the the evil woman uh, Helga, you know the sister, the older sister of Thor, whatever have you. She says something very interesting. She's recruiting this guy, and she says, you know, everybody needs an executioner. You know, give him a sword for the execution, like cut off your neck. But if you look at it, she also says, for the execute also to execute my vision. That's what she says. Very interesting, because if you look at it, somebody like Emerson Mnangagwa, who was uh, from uh, Zimbabwe, he was the executioner for basically for, for Rob Mugabe, right? Uh, we have somebody like Sarah Ramaphosa, who uh, through the, if you want to talk like this, well, I want to talk like this, um, it's the executioner for the, for the ANC, if you want to look at it like that. I'm not saying to look at it like that, but look like that with the whole thing with the, with the, um, uh, with the, with the uh, miners, and, and, uh, with the miners shot down in Americana. But also, if you look at Pence, the real deal when these are all vice presidents, well, were vice presidents, some of them becoming presidents now. Well, Pence, um, again, you know, to me, he's the henchman. Of, um, uh, even though it looks like uh, Donald Trump is the henchman, he does a lot of stuff. But, you know, I always watch how Pence is the one that I'm, I'm like, I, Donald Trump does not, I'm not afraid of Donald Trump, right? I'm afraid of, of, of Mike Pence, okay? So I'm looking at this thing, three, three uh, second in commands, if you will, you know, Mike Pence, uh, Emerson Nagagwa and uh, Sarah Ramaphosa, all were vice, you know, and and, and now uh, because of Mugabe's situation, Nagagwa, he's uh, he's the acting president, I guess, until elections come come about, right? You have Sarah Ramaphosa, who was elected at the part of the uh, the ANC, uh, the chief of the ANC party, right now, but he he most likely will be president. See, then you have Pence. Now, if, if for some reason that. Uh, you know, Donald Trump leaves, then Pence leaves. So you have these people that were vice presidents, or you know, or are called vices. <laughs> they are all set down assume power. So it's, it's, these things to me happen in threes. Uh, just you know, like 
death happens in threes, these things happen in threes. So the, the coming uh, two years, a uh, year and a half, is going to be very interesting to see what happens with these elections, see if Donald Trump actually steps down like, like uh, they want um, uh, Zuma to step down, right? And that was a proposal that takes place for a second until the elections come. So the same thing with Mike Pence. If, uh, if, if Donald Trump steps down, you know, don't know, um, then Pence will be in charge. And I'm, it's just fascinating to me, the way the, the symbiosis of the world. Anyway, just, just waxing polit uh, political, philosophically political, uh, uh, waxing for that for me, T, for the Palestinians taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect.